This Gap Between Recordings brought to you by Microsoft's famous blue screen of death. Okay, chapter 10, workbook problems. <clears throat> this problem looks a lot like one we did in class, just asking for something different. So yo -yo, a yo-yo is constructed by attaching three uniform solid disks along their central axes. The two outer disks are identical, each with mass M equals 65 grams, radius R equals 3.6 centimeters, and moment of inertia I cylinder is one half MR squared. The central smaller disk has mass M over two and radius R over two. A light flexible string of length L equals one meter, having negligible mass is wrapped counterclockwise around the central disk of the yo-yo. The string is completely wound up around the yo-yo and is dropped while the top of the string is held fixed. What are the vertical acceleration and speed of the yo-yo at the moment it finishes unwinding the string? Now, this counterclockwise, I put that in there just in case anybody wanted to see that. It doesn't matter to this problem. So, first question, the concept is, well, in Chapter 9, our problems were things like I have a diving board or I have a flagpole, and the flagpole and diving pole board were staying fixed. Here, the yo-yo is not staying fixed. The yo-yo is not traveling at a constant speed. If it was traveling at a constant speed, it would still be in equilibrium. But because it's not, it's accelerating. That means it's a dynamics problem. So anything that's accelerating, either linear or angular or both accelerations, is a dynamics problem. Now, in this case, it involves rotation. So because it's accelerating and it has rotation, then it's got to be rotational dynamics. Which means we can solve the problem potentially e either using work energy, the second method we learned, or Newton's second law, the first method we learned. In practice, the acceleration is done most easily with one and the final speed with the other. I chose these two things so I would have a reason to do both ways. So we'll start using the work energy approach. So draw, draw a diagram showing the yo-yo along with its energy components at the top and bottom of its fall. Before I even do that, I want to get information for the yo-yo specifically. So the yo-yo is made of three pieces, and obviously you already did this for homework, but it's good to do it again. So basically there's my three pieces. This one is radius R, this one's radius R over 2, and this one's radius R. This is mass M, mass M over 2, and mass M. So the moments of inertia for these three are I1 is equal to 1 half mass times radius squared. I2 is equal to 1 half the mass of this one is M over 2 times the radius of this one, R over 2 quantity squared. And then finally the last one, I3 is equal to 1 half m r squared again. Now if we add these up, or multiply these through, not add, 1 half times 1 half times 1 half squared is 1 16th. So this is equal to m r squared over 16. If we add all of these up, we get I total is equal to 1 half plus 1 half is 1. 1 plus 1 16th is 17 16ths m r squared where M is specified in the problem. So this gives us the total angular momentum or moment of inertia. Also, we should calculate the total mass. Mass total is equal to M plus M over two plus M. So that's equal to five halves M. Those are just useful to have. They're going to be easier for writing out my work. Now, the picture that it asks me to draw is my yo-yo starting up here at the top. And then it goes down. So I have the yo-yo down here. My yo-yo should probably be about the same size. Yo-yo down here. And I have tension at the bottom here, tension at the top there, just so we're real clear about that. 
And the things I'm supposed to specify are potential energy initial, kinetic energy rotational initial, kinetic energy translational initial, and potential energy final, kinetic energy rotational final, and kinetic energy translational final. First things first, potential energy. Potential energy, the equation we learned for gravitational potential energy is MGH, where H is defined from some arbitrary reference point. So to make life easy, I'm going to choose this as H equals 0. And up here we have H equals 1.00 meters. How do I know that is 1.00 meters? Because the string was 1 meter long. So when the string is completely unwound, it's dropped 1 meter. So that means the potential energy initial is the mass total times G times H initial. The problem does specify that, um, or does it specify, it should specify that you drop it from rest. I don't see that in my quick reading, but I hope that I wrote that somewhere. So if you start from rest, then you have no kinetic energy because kinetic energy is energy in motion. Now to make sure we don't forget, kinetic energy rotational is equal to one half I omega squared and kinetic energy translational is equal to one half mass times speed squared. So since the rotation speed were zero to begin with, those were both zero. Now for the finals, Potential energy final, since our H final is zero, that's zero. But rotational kinetic energy, that's going to be one half I total omega final squared and translational one half mass total V final squared. So I have all of those written out. And of course, you were supposed to write them. Calculate the total moment of inertia, 17 sixteenths mr squared zero or not zero mass total gh initial zero 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 one half i total omega final squared one half m total v final squared so notice i have V final and omega final are both unknowns. I is known, M is known, G is known, H is known. The only thing that's unknown in this is, is omega and V. And we need to have a relationship between those two. Because we have at the end, we're on the last lap. So the radius at which it's rolling off is R over 2. Then if we consider the center stationary, the tangential speed is equal to that radius of r over 2 multiplied by omega. So that means I can use this and substitute that omega final is equal to 2 v final over r. And I'm going to put that in right there. So that means, and coming over here where I have it, so now I can use my work energy relation. Now the work energy relation, work non-conservative is equal to change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy. Do I have anything doing work here? Well, I have, first of all, I need to specify conservative, right? Non-conservative and conservative. Um, work non-conservative is work done by things like friction. And I have none of those here. So work non-conservative zero is my change in kinetic energy. That's going to be my finals minus my initials. So that's going to be one half I total times 
2 squared is 4, v final squared over r squared, plus 1 half m total, v final squared. So that's my kinetic energy final, minus my kinetic energy 0, which is both zeros, plus my potential energy final, 0, minus my potential energy initial, mass total, G H initial. So this is an equation, and the only unknowns are V final. So I'm going to factor out the V final squared in these first two terms. V final squared times, notice 4 times 1 half is 2, 2 I total over R squared plus 1 half m total. And if I move this to the other side of the equal sign, it will make it positive, equals mass total g h initial. So that means v final squared is equal to mass total g h initial over 2 i total over r squared plus 1 half mass total, I am going to need to square root everything to get my number. Remember when you square root, that's going to throw in a plus or minus. So my answer could be a plus V or a minus V. Now the fact that it's going down means it's going to be a minus V. So that's going to be equal to minus square root of my mass total, 2.5 five halves is what I wrote before, five halves, my mass, my mass was 65 grams or 0 0.065 kilograms times g 9.80 meters per second squared, multiplied by my initial height of 1.00 meters, all over two times my I total, which is 17 sixteenths, times mr squared, the mass is 0 0.065 kilograms, and I'm just going to put r squared over r squared, because you know what those r squareds do? That's right, they cancel. Then I have plus one half my mass total, which is five halves of 0 0.065 kilograms. Okay. There, I've got it all written out. Now, if I did all of my numbers correct here, this comes out to minus 2.694 meters per second. And of course, how many sig figs do I have? Two. So that's minus 2.7 meters per second. And Papa, there it is. And <laughs> that equation is too long, so C over yonder. All right, so we were able to calculate the final speed using the work energy. That was really simple and straightforward if you think about it. Not so much for the second part, trying to find the acceleration. I can't just use the result I just did and say constant acceleration. So, you know, the uh, V final squared minus V initial squared um, is equal to 2 times acceleration times the distance it travels because the acceleration was changing as it fell. So what I need to do instead is I need to come back and I need to apply Newton's second law methods. So for Newton's second law methods, now there's two ways you can do it. The way I have always preferred to do it. Well, that was a nice concentric situation. That's better. The way I've always preferred to do it is to do the center of mass. So I'm drawing all the forces acting on this. And then I say some of the torques about the center of mass is equal to I center of mass times alpha. 
And so if I do the sum of the torques about the center mass here, I have the force of tension. And the radius for that is R over 2. I know it doesn't look like it in my picture. And then using my sign convention, that is a negative torque. Negative because R is going like that. So R cross F, fingers to the left. Orient so your fingers can, middle finger can point up and your thumb points into the page. So that's negative torque. Now, what's the relationship between alpha and acceleration? Well, if this thing is rotating clockwise, then that is a negative rotation. And it's dropping, so it's a negative velocity. It's going to turn out then that alpha, just like before, in fact, we can use exactly this relationship here. Just divide both sides by time. We have alpha is equal to 2a tangential over r. Negative is negative, so we, we keep the signs both positive, or we can put them as both negative and the same thing. So there's the relationship between alpha and acceleration. So that's equal to I center of mass times 2 alpha tangential over r. Now remember, I center of mass is what we've been calling I total before height beforehand, before now. So there's one equation. I don't know what the tension is, and I don't know what the acceleration is. So that equation is not enough. So a second equation, some of the forces in, most obviously the vertical direction, is equal to mass total Ay. Ay is what I call tangential acceleration before. So if I look at my forces, I have the tension minus the force of gravity equals mass total A total. So if I plug this tension, well solve this for tension, tension is equal to, keep it in mind, that's mass total times G. So move across, it's mass total G plus mass total A tangential. If I plug this in for there, I'm going to have minus mass total g r over 2 minus mass total a tangential r over 2 equals i center of mass times 2 a tangential over r. Now the only unknown is a tangential. I've eliminated the tension from the equation, but I've got some work to do. I need to move this to this side of the equation. I have minus mass tangential g r over 2 equals i center of mass times 2 times a tangential over r plus, because it was negative on the left, it's going to be positive on the right, mass total a tangential r over 2. Let us factor out the a tangential on the right hand side. And so finally solving for a tangential plugging in mass tangent or mass total was five halves m. G is, well, G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then R over 2. 2 times I center mass was 17 sixteenths and R squared. So multiplying all this through, 
you notice that I have mass in every term, so the mass cancels. And I have r squared over r here, so one of those r's cancel. And then I have r left in every term, so the r's cancel. And I'm left with minus 5 over 4 times 9.80 meters per second squared. The 4 came from this 2 and this 2. Divided by 2 times 17 over 16 is 17 over 8. And then 5 halves times 1 half is 5 quarters. We're probably pretty good math. We know 5 quarters is 10 eighths. 17 eighths plus 10 eighths is 27 eighths on bottom. I'm going to make the top minus 10 eighths just so my eighths will cancel. So I'm going to cancel those eighths. I have minus 10 27ths. 9.80 meters per second squared. Now, let me check my answer to make sure that's the same as what I got before. And show sure up, it is. It goes minus 3 point. Now, notice at this point, it didn't matter how many significant digits i would given you for any of the numbers, as long as the one half was an exact one half, then I have the number of different digits that I have in G. So 3.63 meters per second squared is the acceleration. Now, as you saw in the textbook, there is another, and actually in this case, easier way of doing the same problem. I summed the torques about the center of mass. I could have chosen to sum the torques about a point other than the center of mass, I could have summed them about here. If I sum the torques about A, I have a different I. I have the I about point A times alpha. Now what we have is we're seeing at this moment the yo-yo is rotating about that point A. And at any moment immediately prior to this, it was rotating about a different point. But we still have the same relationship between A tangential and alpha at this point. But the torque is easier. The torque is just going to be, in this case, this distance, R over 2, times the force of gravity, the mass total G. And that's a negative torque by using our right-hand rule. Using the parallel axis theorem, that's I center of mass plus mass total times the distance, which is one half the base of the, well, one half capital R, squared, and then times alpha, which, as we determined before, alpha was 2A tangential over R. Now, this is one equation with only one unknown. So, Let's go ahead and divide as necessary. So I am going to divide everything by everything that's not A ten tangential on the right-hand side. I have A tangential equals minus R over 2 M total G over I center of mass times 2 over R, just bring that in, plus mass total times R over 2 corner squared times 2 over R. Well, you notice the 2 over R cancels with one of those R over 2s. And then substituting in minus R over 2 times 5 halves m times g over 17 sixteenths m r squared times 2 over 
R plus five halves M plus R over two. And this is exactly the same as what I had there. So I'm going to stop my parallel solving because I've gotten to the same value. And you can see it took one less calculation, definitely easier to do it this way. Okay, <laughs> I've done all the work here. So my A final turned out to be the very simple form of, or my very simple form. of minus 10 27th G which turned out to be minus 3.63 meters per second squared. All right, hopefully that gave you some practice at an, another type of skill we'll have to on the test.